You know, I, I would want to say first of all that I, I really appreciated um, the positive um, support I got, mm -hmm. um, and, and that was really nice to see people that um, that felt that that you know I tried to do a good job, mm -hmm. um, and some people who even uh, who felt that I um, you know represented them in some way in mm -hmm. in um, in the, the work I did. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't trying. Uh, to win a popularity contest, and and um, I I wasn't trying to represent you know a particular segment of our community. Mm -hmm. um, I hoped as as I thought all CRB members ought to represent the community uh, in in a particular way. That's that that we're all members of the community. We all have our different friends, our different circles. Um, we live and 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 mix in the community. Mm -hmm. Um, have many discussions with people, and I'd expect that our our purpose um, as citizens, you know, on, on a civilian review board is to uh, to bring some of those those views and viewpoints mm -hmm. to the table when we discuss cases, mm -hmm. um, not necessarily consciously, but just mm -hmm. uh, unconsciously, just you, because you're the, you're the product of your experiences and conversations and interactions that you have. Mm -hmm. So um, the the way it happened, I I was not surprised not to be reappointed because I knew that some um, counselors uh, had taken um, a dislike. I don't know to me personally. I would hope it's not to me personally, but if it is, so be it. But they'd taken a, a dislike to some of the things um, that I said. Um, uh, at various times over the, the three years. Um, I think particularly um, my comments at the time um, when the council was reviewing uh, the interim auditor, Don Reynolds, mm -hmm. um, uh, one of the complaints I filed against her. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and when the council handled that, there the result of that review um, was that certain restrictions ought to be placed on on her and the and the auditor's office, mm -hmm. and uh, that concerned me greatly. I was concerned number one because the complaint to me was a very spurious one. Mm -hmm. um, number two, the restrictions that they ultimately placed, uh, I felt were an attack on the independence of the auditor and were uh, an offense to Ms. Reynolds personally and professionally. Mm -hmm. um, the proposals to uh, to have weekly meetings with her and, and to have her um, pass any actions that she was proposing to take by the city attorney and that sort of mm -hmm. thing it just went directly contrary to the the ordinance that mm -hmm. says it's supposed to be an independent auditor in auditor's office. and. I emailed um, those views and comments and analysis mm -hmm. uh, to the council. Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't just express an opinion, but I stated why. Mm -hmm. um, I backed it up. It's, you know, it's part of my training with specific citations to the, to the ordinance. And um, I think that some counselors took offense at that. Uh, it seemed that they were bothered by the fact that I would challenge actions and statements they made. I thought I was duty bound to do that. Way back in the PayArc meetings, back in January and February, mm -hmm. um, I, I went to those meetings and I saw you take a lot of very uh, strong stands so that the spirit and wording intent of the ordinance would be upheld mm -hmm. or honored or implemented correctly. So do you think it may have started back as far as then that you might have been getting in the crosshairs of people that didn't want you on? Um, I, I, yeah, I suppose that could be. Um, I'm just, I'm not a politician by nature. Yeah. I, um, so uh, I, I don't really play that game. So, for instance, in the PayArc meeting, I was doing what I thought was my job. Mm -hmm. I was taking positions that I thought were important positions to take. Uh, and I really wasn't concerned about how are people going to view me, how are they going to judge me, will they like me, will the right people like me? Yeah. 
kept true to the task yeah, that was... Yeah, so I didn't think about it, frankly. The uh, newspaper article the, in the Register Guard, um, the day after the decision was made uh, not to reappoint me, to, re to reappoint others, and um, in, in, in that article there was a quote from uh, the Council President, Alan Zelenka, mm -hmm. and I, that just made me shake, shake my head in, in disbelief. And the line about wanting not, no controversy, right? Yeah, yeah, the line, and I, I, I don't have it exactly in front of me, but essentially I it was. I yeah. <laughs> But, uh, uh, you know, essentially was that, that um, Brisbane was too controversial and that we don't want the controversy, we just want it uh, uh, just to go business as usual, day-to-day -day business as usual, mm -hmm. ho-hum. Mm -hmm. And I thought, how incredibly naive or, or disingenuous. It, it's not me that's controversial. Mm -hmm. It's events. Um, the circumstances that, the that, that are in place. Here. <laughs> and the two or three weeks following that comment, it played out exactly that way. Mm -hmm. um, and why? Well, I'm, uh, I'm gone. Mm -hmm. Has controversy concerning police actions or police oversight gone away? Uh, perhaps you, are we you, you, considering this uh, September twenty second tasering of the Chinese students? Well, you got the Chinese students. The you've mm -hmm. got the case with the the dog bite case. Right. Um, you've got um, controversy about taser use in general. Mm -hmm. It's um, a friend of mine um, said to me the other day. Said, "Wow, today was a banner day. There was nothing in the paper about tasers." Mm -hmm. It. These things are, it's going to continue to be controversial until we start really dealing with the problem. Nobody likes to be scrutinized. Nobody likes to think that people are looking over their shoulders. And if you have a difficult job, um, it's all the more sensitive to you. You feel like, uh, I'm doing a really difficult job, I'm putting my life on the line, um, and then these people in their comfortable armchairs are second-guessing me. Uh, especially if you have the, the kind of history that you have with, with police departments, you know, up until, you know, 15 years ago or something, or 20 years ago, I'm not sure when the first ones, first oversight started to come about, there was no outside body or person looking at the conduct of police. They, they didn't have that. So there is, uh, there's a long history of not having any oversight. So something new like this comes along and it's pretty uncomfortable and you're going to resist it. That's just going to be natural. The first step is you've got to hold people accountable. And out of all the cases that we reviewed, and I don't know how many there were, but there was only one of those cases that we reviewed that uh, an officer ended up being disciplined. That the, the um, chief found that, that there was a necessity for discipline. If an officer has made a mistake, if they've screwed up, you've got to call them on it. You've got to say, nope, this was wrong, we made a mistake here, and we have to own that. They can stack the civilian review board the auditor's office can decide to do nothing, the police chief can do nothing, but the, those issues and problems will not go away until they're dealt with. So I think it is inevitable that they will have to be faced constructively. If you've got um, uh, problems with tasers use, if you've got officers who are not making good decisions, if you've got officers who are not properly trained or you've got procedures um, that are leading to people's constitutional rights being violated or people being injured, it's going to blow up. There are politicians who play a big role in the success of this system. Politicians have to be responsive to public sentiment.